Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Semen Retention Sunday episode here on the Regal Change YouTube channel. My name is Thaddeus for those that are just joining. And of course, this message is going to be aimed more toward <laughs> men. But of course, there are also some women that do watch these kinds of videos and they want to get to know more about semen retention and what exactly it is. And it's essentially just celibacy in all shapes and sizes uh, for men. And the same kind of benefits also apply to women in some ways. As far as I've talked to uh, many different kinds of women that are on celibacy in my consultation sessions, and they've had very similar experiences. But with men, it's almost like there's an increase in the magnitude and the shape of which celibacy occurs for them. For example, the topic for today is why your soul will no longer be a, <laughs> a greedy and degenerate and just unsatisfied dainty soul anymore when you are on semen retention. And the reason that this is, is you're actually respecting yourself and you're learning the difference between manners and respect. Now, what is the difference between manners and respect? Well, when you treat yourself with manners or respect, how do you, like, what does that look like to you? What does that look like? When you have manners, when you show manners to yourself, you're, you're courteous, you're cordial, but, and you're not like intentionally trying to hurt the other person or hurt yourself in this case, but with respect, it becomes like you recognize that there are certain things that you do to yourself and that you don't do to yourself that can impact your well-being for better or for worse in a larger way than normal. So as far as the, you could say, the eloquence in which you treat yourself with respect is also going to be shown to the outside world how you treat yourself. When you treat yourself with a certain kind of sophistication and respect, that's going to be demonstrated to the outside world. Okay, well, why is it that on seam retention this is more the case. Why is it on semen retention that you, you are no longer that greedy, distasteful soul <laughs> that you once were? It's because you're actually starting with yourself. You are treating your body with the respect and the manners that it needs to be resourceful as a biological organism. When you are treating your body which is a biological organism, as something that is sacred, there's going to be a psychophysiological connection in which you're going to be operating at a higher level than most of those people around you. Out of everybody that I've talked to and all the semen retention videos that I've done, everybody that's on semen retention, it seems like the way that I described it, and I described it to someone uh, like this in a recent consultation, it's like people are concerned about flat lines in semen retention, right? And people are like concerned like, oh, well, I'm not going to get like that, that like super burst of energy anymore. And like, I'm just going to be neutral. It's like, well, what really happens on semen retention is it's kind of like taking off in an airplane for anybody that's taken off in an airplane. What is that like? Well, it can be kind of abrupt. <laughs> it can be kind of uh, intense for the first little bit because you're not used to going at that certain speed, right? Like, and so you are just, boom, you are shot back into the back of your seat as you start the lift off. And just as you get that lift off, I equate that to like day one through seven is just getting that lift off. And then once you're actually like five to 10,000 feet in the air, you know, you're still going up pretty, pretty uh, at a high rate of trajectory towards the sky. You're still going strong. Like you're, 
you're still improving. I equate that to like day seven to 14. And then anything after that can be, it really depends on the person. It really depends on who you are and where you're at in your own spiritual journey. It also depends on how you're operating in general. Uh, Just what you're doing with your life, that is. And where you're putting your attention and what you're valuing as your attention. Okay. And then once you get to about 20,000 feet to 30,000 feet, that's anywhere between like the day 14 to 30 range, maybe even the day 60 range. And then once you get to about three months or so, 90 days, roughly speaking, that's where you start to kind of level out. And that's where, for those that are not aware, uh, most of the uh, airplanes that you go on, like commercially or whatever, they fly at about 35,000 feet. And what do they do when they get to 35,000 feet? They just kind of stay at that altitude, right? It's kind of the same thing with semen retention. You're just going to be on that higher level from then on out. Now, of course, you might hit some turbulence, so to speak, right? You might hit some turbulence, but you're not going to just drastically choose a route that is just going to be inconceivable to where you want to go. But you're also aware that if you're not where you want to be, you're not going to just drop in the airplane. Like You're just going to keep going. You're going to keep flying. And that's really what this is all about is learning how to just continue on and make semen retention a lifestyle. Semen retention, I know that I've even made videos about like getting girls and such or like attraction with women because, and and I don't really like to look at the numbers of what I'm making. I do to some degree, like the views that is of my videos, only because I want to make sure that I'm, I'm providing content that people are going to like, but I see far too many, and I don't even know if I want to make another kind of video on semen retention about attraction for women or whatnot, because it's like, those are the ones that get the most views. It seems like generally speaking on my videos. And I don't want that to be the case. I don't want you guys to think that Semen retention is about attracting women and because everybody wants to attract women, of course, like uh, every man that has ever lived (laughs) wants to attract women, unless he's like a homosexual or something, then then that's just something else. But uh, (laughs) that's beside the case. The point is, is that generally speaking, men want to attract women and I understand that that's what you want. And I understand that that could be an incentive to do semen retention, but it's not the goal. It's not what you're really trying to do. What you're really trying to do when you are on semen retention is you're trying to fulfill your soul. You're trying to repent for your sins. Now, again, I do not like to use these kind of religious terms in the religious context. I think about it more as a psycho analytical Uh, word, so to speak. So what exactly is repentance and what exactly is sin? Well, sin is doing that which is harmful to yourself or to other people, whether intentionally or unintentionally. And then, or it's like giving yourself a setback to some degree, making yourself stuck in some way. And then there's repentance, which is you're, you're leading yourself out of evil. You're leading, you're being led out of evil and you're being delivered from evil or anything that is harming you in a negative way and into something that is going to change your life for the better. So you're changing your behaviors in accordance to being a proper, well-sophisticated, eloquent individual that is going to provide for himself in which there will be a newfound love of insight, wisdom, honor, integrity, and values, principles, etc. So you're reshaping your whole being to do something 
more with your life. That's what repentance really is, psychoanalytically, in my opinion. But be wary out here, guys, because most of the people do not want you to repent. Most men, <laughs> they don't even know about semen retention. Like, they really don't. That's why whenever I do happen to come across someone that seems like they are receptive, they're open-minded, they have genuinely good intentions, I... I just start like I would I would uh, not even be afraid to ask like yeah are you on semen retention or not or do you know about it, and everybody that does my consultations or anybody that's been involved in my consultations is it sounds like they're aware of semen retention but most of the guys out in our communities fellas and ladies that may be watching this not very many people practice celibacy not very many people practice abstinence from PMO. And abstinence, abstinence from PMO is, well, it's corn, corn, masturbation, and orgasm. And so when you're practicing abstinence from PMO, you're automatically going to have a certain aura about you that is going to reflect a deeper sacredness in your being. And again, this comes back to you fulfilling your soul. Many people have lost their souls. It's, it's no secret. <laughs> it's no secret that many people are soulless. And when I mean soulless, it means that some people have souls, but they're just, they haven't put in the work to really claim it for themselves again. And in a way, like, I don't like saying that, like, my soul has ever really been lost. It, it's more like I had to find and remember my soul. And I've also, some, something that I've also learned is that God owns my soul. Now, it's not necessarily an owning in which God is the tyrant. It's more like God has allowed me to be who I am and live as a free spirit insofar as I'm doing that which is right. I'm doing that which is good. I'm doing that which is uh, contributing to the beauty, the truth, and the good of humanity. And so as insofar as your actions are, are reflecting the goodness, the beauty, and the truth of God, then your soul is going to be free, but it's still God's. <laughs> it's still God's creation. So, yeah, you know, like wh when I say own, I don't necessarily mean like a slave. Now, some people do sell their souls, right? Like people, like we have that saying, sell their souls. And this is something I actually like heard in passing at the gym earlier today. Uh, this guy was just talking and I assume he, because he had headphones in, so I'm assuming he was talking to someone like over the headphones and through the phone. But he was talking to this person and I was just getting some water at the at the water fountain. And um, he he was next to me and I heard him saying that like, oh, yeah, you all you are in Vegas. Oh, well, you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's why it's Sin City. And, you know, I thought about that for a second. I thought about like the. Uh, like, why Why do we think that what happens in sin stays in sin, right? Like, what what makes us, it's almost like it's a cope. And I don't, I really don't like that term right now, even though it's like a popular term to use, cope. But like, it's almost like these people are, in a way, they're saying that their sins are not going to actually be sins because you're, it's happening in hell. <laughs> it's happening. Well, if it's happening in hell, then like you're already in hell. So like, who cares? Kind of a thing, right? And perhaps I'm looking too much into this, but it made me think about why we think that if we're already in hell, we can just continue to dance with the devil. Like we can just continue to dance with the devil. There's, there's so much that we can do 
uh, with the devil already that like, well, I might as well go for that extra milkshake anyway, or I might as well go for that, that <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to say that on YouTube. But anyway, uh, we'll just continue on here. You guys get the point. You guys get the point. It's not necessarily that if you're already participating in sin, it's like, it's not the case that if you continue to sin, it's not going to be an issue. The one that flees from temptation and the one that flees from sin is the one that's going to fulfill his or her soul. And the reason being is because they're going to actually be lovers of wisdom and insight more so than material gain. And make no mistake, semen retention is going to make you strong, like internally strong in a way that you probably never even experienced before. In fact, I've had experiences over the past year and a half because I've been doing semen retention since May of 2022. I've had experiences that I don't, well, number one, I don't think they would have happened if I weren't on semen retention. And number two, if I happen to do if I happen to have gone through those things while not on semen retention, I think my spirit would have bent to a place where it could have been broken. And that's kind of weird to think about. Even though like I was already choosing to follow Christ, I was already choosing to follow God. It was just like these certain little situations where if I didn't have internal strength and the resilience to overcome these things, it would have been a not so good out outcome. So your internal strength is going to be increased for sure. And honestly, that's going to be perhaps the most important thing that you get out of semen retention is the developing the closer connection to the most high God. And also just the feeling of internal strength and confidence and competence as well. And so with that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful and peace be with you till next time.